Hit it. Hit it. Watching the Marley Bird YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to seam a sweater using both a slip stitch join and the mattress stitch. This project that I'm working on today is called the Xanadu Pullover, which is a free pattern available over at redheart.com. I did an entire instructional video on how to read the Xanadu Pullover pattern and complete all the pieces. Now it's time to learn how to put them together, so that's what I'm going to do today. The way we're going to start when it comes to this pattern, and most patterns, when you're seaming pieces together for a sweater, you always want to begin with the shoulders. Now the biggest thing when you're talking about the shoulders of a sweater is remember that that is where the sweater hangs on your body. So your shoulders really act like a hanger to your sweater. So because this particular sweater is using some Red Heart Boutique Treasures yarn, which is a kind of, it's a bulky yarn and it's rather thick and gravity is gonna start pulling on the weight of the fabric, I wanna make sure that my shoulder seam is nice and secure. More often than not, you want to use a very secure join at the shoulders whenever you're securing crochet sweaters. Now that is obviously a rule that can be broken and you could do a whip stitch or any sort of other join, but I really do like the slip stitch join. There are times when the slip stitch just is not going to work and I'm going to show you why it wouldn't work as I'm working through this one. So let's look down here at the hand cam and I'll get you started. Right here, I have two pieces of the Xanadu pullover. So I have the back and I have the front. And I'm looking at the wrong sides of the fabric. The reason I know they're the wrong sides is I made the point of putting a marker on the right side of both pieces so that way I knew where those were. So I have the right sides facing each other, so I'm looking at the wrong sides of the fabric and I'm matching up my shoulder right there, okay? So it's the shoulder that I just created and they look really great side by side. Now I could take a darning needle and some yarn, some of the working yarn that I've been using, and whip stitch this together. So I would stick it through both of those and just whip stitch it together. That would work. But because I want to make this a little bit more secure, I'm choosing to use a slip stitch join. Now for purposes of this video, I'm going to use a pink yarn, so hopefully you can see what I'm showing you. But if you're doing this on your own, you want to use the yarn that you used on your project, okay? The closer you can get to the colors that you finished off on up here the better so that way it doesn't look extremely visible with the join because using this join will show some of the strands in between but if you're using the same color it's not going to look super bad okay like right now I'm showing the pink and the orange I would want to make sure that I don't have the uh, the green or the blue on my uh, in my yarn to seam it all up so I'm going to go ahead I'm going to take my hook and I'm going to stick it through the stitches as they are sitting right here and I'm sticking through both sides of the fabric. So I've put my hook through one stitch on the front and one stitch on the back. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to join with a slip stitch. So I've just joined with a slip stitch. I'm going to carry on this row putting my hook into one stitch on the front and one stitch on the back all the way along the row and then slip stitching. What this is going to do is it's going to join the two pieces together and it's also making it really nice and secure. I'm going to get a nice small ridge up there to rest on my shoulder so that way um, as the sweater is being worn, my shoulders can really hold up to the weight of the fabric. Now as I'm working across here, you can see part of this shoulder is made where one side is a little bit higher than the other so there it looks like there's a turn right there. I don't want that to be on the right side of my fabric, so I'm going to make sure as I'm seaming up that I'm, I kind of hide that piece, okay? So I want to make sure that I am maybe taking just one of the loops from that piece so that it doesn't look like a big bump on the opposite side, and then come over here and do my slip stitch join. Does that make sense? I carry on, keep doing my slip stitches, trying to match up my shoulder seams as best as possible, okay? Just like this, all the way across. If you find that one shoulder seems to be a little bit more, um, 
longer and he seems to be longer than the other for some reason maybe the kids came in and interrupted you when you were doing your shoulder seams this is an area or not your shoulder seams but your shoulder uh, finishing on your front and the back this is an area that you could fudge a little bit okay so you could um, maneuver it and really line up those stitches well I'm at the end I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna finish off and I'm going to cut my yarn making sure I leave four to six inches I always leave a four to six inch tail you guys so I can weave that in okay now I have this nice seam, I open this up, it's not too bulky, this would be on the inside of my fabric, and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to show you why you want to make sure that you're using the same color yarn. Can you see the stitches right here, see the pink? You can actually see the pink stitches peeking through, okay? So you want to make sure that you're using the same color yarn when you do this particular stitch on the top because you don't want that to be a different color peeping through. This is also one of those times that if for some reason this color peeping through just, is, just looks really bad, this is not the type of stitch pattern you're going to want to use. Or you could go ahead and do this and maybe you do a top stitch chain for a decoration to make it look good. You can really make that um, a customizable thing for you. But I know for a fact that with this particular pattern, if you match up the colorway and the yarn right up here at this point, it looks nice and looks really good. So as it rests on the shoulder, it's able to maintain and hold the weight of the fabric. You would do the same thing over here on the opposite shoulder match them up, join with the slip stitch, and carry on your way. Now you need to have both shoulders seamed before you can, in, you can uh, put the sleeve cap into the sleeve, so make sure you seam both shoulders up. Join me back here and I'll show you how to use the mattress stitch to put the sleeve into the armhole. Okay, so you have seamed up your, your shoulders and it's time to seam up the sleeves. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to open your the front and the back of your uh, sweater and make sure that you have the right side facing you, okay? We're going to do the crochet mattress stitch. So uh, in order to do that, you have to have the right sides of the fabric facing you the whole time. So we want the right side, which is the public side of your, your sweater. It's the side that everybody's gonna see. And we also want the right side of your sleeve. Then I want you to go ahead and take your yarn. Again, I'm using a contrasting yarn for the purposes of this video, but you wanna use the same color yarn that you use to make your sweater, okay? Cut off a length of yarn that will take you all the way from one edge of the armhole all the way around to the other edge, okay? You don't wanna get halfway up and then have it run out. You really wanna have enough to get through the whole piece. The next thing that I find really handy, it's not a mandatory thing, but I'm gonna tell you about them because I think they're so great. These are called mini knit clips, and they're available at redheart.com via uh, Susan Bates. And what they do is they literally just have a little, if you look down here at the hand cam, they have a little, like a puncture um, piece that comes through and it matches up to a hole. And they are handy to help you clip together your sweater, okay, so it doesn't get out of, out of shape. The first thing I want you to do is you're gonna open your sweater up and you're gonna take your sleeve and make sure, once again, make sure you have your right side facing you. And I'm gonna match the top of my sleeve up with the center of my armhole, okay? So it's right up at my shoulder. The reason I'm doing that is because that is where I wanna make sure my sweater is not, my sleeve is not off kilter, right? I wanna make sure that those two points match up. The other points I'm gonna start doing together, I'm just gonna work this down the row, is I'm gonna match up this outer edge of the sleeve cap to the outer edge of the armhole. I'm gonna match those up. So I know that those have to match up, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Match up and match up. Now they're all matched up, okay? So now it looks like a ill-fitting puzzle piece, right? No worries. What's gonna happen here is as we shift and maneuver and shape this piece, bringing the back or the front up to match up to these pieces, we're gonna do a mattress stitch. Now to do a mattress stitch, it's not hard at all. It's really easy. To make sure these are butted up together, I'm gonna do a couple more clips. I'll do the same on the other side. You don't have to use these clips, you guys. 
I find them useful. I find them easier to use than safety pins because if you use the safety pins, the coils of the safety pins tend to clip or snag your yarn sometimes. Um, and then closed pins are kind of big and cumbersome. So I really like these. They're, they're really handy. They're one of the best tools I think out there. I'm taking my, my tapestry needle and I prefer metal tapestry needles so that's what I'm going to use. And because all of these are matched up now, I can go ahead and I can clip unclip this one, okay, because I know that's where I'm going to start. And I'm coming down here to my edge and I'm going to begin what I call the figure eight join, okay. So I'm going to stick my yarn in underneath and I'm starting on the sweater side, on the body of the sweater. And I'm going to come up and I'm going to leave a nice little tail that I can weave in later. Then I'm going to come over here to the sleeve side from the back to the front and pull it up. And then come back over here to the sweater side and come back up back to the front. So it looks like a figure eight, okay? So it's just a way to secure, secure my yarn in place, okay? Now I, so this is where I start building, okay? So I'm making sure all along, I'm making sure things are joined together really well. Let me make sure I'm on the hand cam. All right, we're good. Here we go. What's going to happen is we have this nice line of stitches over here and I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab a stitch, come up and pull. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And I'm going to go, I'm going between the stitches you guys. I'm not slipping yarn. I'm not doing anything like that. I'm just going between the stitches. Okay. And pull up. Come over here, grab the stitch, and pull up. Come over here, grab the stitch, and pull up. Now what happens if I lay this down and I pull these together, see how they are joined together really nice and neat? As you go along, you'll get really lucky for a couple of the rows, and you'll be able to match up row for row and be able to match them up really great. Isn't that lovely? Even though I'm using a different color yarn, you can see as I pull it all together each time, it pulls it together and it's virtually invisible, and I'm going to get a very lovely seam on the opposite side. Can you see that? The seam on the opposite side is virtually invisible. It's not bulky so you're not going to get a bunch of bulk in your armpit area and then I just keep going back and forth and I make sure that I'm just pulling up some of the stitches get that out of the way that's the little baggie that the clips come in I know they're called mini knit clips but you could use them for crochet too obviously um, again I just think they help the seaming process so much and you just pull it up. You see that? You see how easy that is? You would continue on doing this along the whole way and as you come up to a clip that you don't need, you clip it off and undo it, come all the way up, carry around, all the way down here to the end, okay? Always start at the armpit parts because if you get over here and say you need to fudge it a little bit, meaning say that you have a little bit extra fabric that you don't need, you can always tuck that in the armpit area and it's not going to show because as you're wearing your sweater, you know, the armpit area is hidden. It's not, it's out, not out and visible. Whereas if you started up here at the top of your shoulder and went down and then maybe top, you just, it, it doesn't work as well. So start down at the armpit area, which is down here, work all the way up and back over. You're going to join both sleeves. Once the sleeves are joined, I'm going to skip ahead because I don't think you need me to really do the rest of that right now. Once the sleeves are joined, let's pretend they're joined. Lift this up. So your sleeves are joined. Everything's honky dory. Yes, I just said honky dory. <laughs> It, here's your, your lovely sweater. It looks like this. The last thing to seam up is your body edge right here and your sleeve edge right here. For me, I prefer to do the mattress stitch along these edges as well. And just like before, I like to begin at the bottom of both of those. So I'd begin at the bottom of my sleeve and work up towards the armpit. Work at the bottom of my, my body of my sweater. Work up towards the armpit once again. So that way, if there's anything that didn't fit quite right, it's hidden in the armpit area, okay? Easy, right? Once you have all that seamed together, you have a great sweater. 
oh, wait a minute, we forgot about the ribbing. Well, maybe you don't want to add ribbing at this point. That's totally doable. Remember my friend Jenny who made the Xanadu pullover for herself? She decided the ribbing wasn't for her and didn't add the ribbing. But then I have another friend who decided the ribbing was, like, that's, that's what made the sweater so cool. And so she wanted to know how to add the ribbing. I want you to go check out the ribbing video on how to make it and how to join it if you are interested in that. Otherwise, you are done with your sweater and you can enjoy it and wear it and have a good time and uh, let people come to you and say, wow, where did you buy that? You could say, I didn't. Marley Bird taught me how to make it on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this video. Go get this pattern. If you don't have this pattern yet, it's over and it's on uh, redheart.com. It's a free pattern. All the materials you need are listed over there as well. Until next time, you guys, make sure you smash that like button. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.